So we woke up and went to the Hilton. It was about a 15 minute walk, but when we were at the Hilton, we had to wait 15 minutes for our bus tour, the big red bus. We got on, sat the first floor, and we went round about a quarter, halfway through, and then we managed to get some seats at the top um, on the bus. So then we continued the bus to our sitting on the top floor. Off at Union Square. We did the we did the full loop and got off at Union Square. Yeah, we really should be moving like backwards and forwards. Oh, oh, oh. Then we walked back to our Airbnb, but on the way there we stopped at a nice diner for lunch. What well time? We then walked back to the Airbnb to pick up our hoodies and jumpers uh, so it wouldn't be colder at the night time. And then we walked the Amos to the Painted Ladies, which are a series of houses painted nice.
Then we've got an Uber to Gira Daily Square. Kind of then we walked 30, then we walked 15 minutes to Pier 41. We're going to Alcatraz Island at the coast of San Francisco. So then um, at the pier we lined up and then got on the ferry that went around the Alcatraz Island and then landed on the island. National Parks Conservancy, welcome to Alcatraz Night Tour. My name is William and I'll be one of your guides tonight. Before I begin to tell you about Alcatraz, there are a few safety rules you should know. Close to the boat exit, so you may be one of the first passengers coming off the boat. The tram is limited to those with our ship vested with sails to enter this bay. That vessel, the San Carlos, was flying the flag of the third Spain, and its sailors were on a voyage of discovery. We saw the red paint that the Indians put there when they when they occupied it in in the 1970s. programs and events happening tonight. Just an example of a few of those. There's a talk about life after Alcatraz, and there is two that deal exclusively with the escapes. So be sure to look for the sign in the Cell House bookstore that will have all of those listed and many more, all included with your night tour ticket. Thank you for joining us and have a wonderful night here on Alcatraz.
好吃啊！怎么样？上。And we did the audio tour. It started in the shower room where we lined up around that. Then you got your audio tour, and then you went straight into the main bit of Alcatraz. One of the more infamous prisoners to live here in D Block was convicted killer Robert Stroud, the so called Birdman. And almost to me. fifties radios were installed at Alcatraz. You might have noticed what looks like a light switch. So the coolest bits we saw well, like all the cells right next to each other, and like in the middle of it, so you can just see cells all around you. The canteen is pretty cool, so lots of information and stuff, and the hospital wing. Cell number 138. Walk over to it and look inside. And he was laying in there, so I reached in through the bars and I hit the pillow. And Lord knows what happened. The head fell off on the floor. The guy said that I shot back. So he had pacers, he had hair on his head and everything. One of the other officers there said, here's another one, Bill, right here. There's one up here, Bill. And I said, don't touch it, don't touch it. A horror movie. And, and I was right in the middle of it. We then went to the yard where we saw the sunset and it was nice and we took pictures and then left. And then, and then we looked around a bit more, went to the hospital wing which was only open at the night time tours. So we went in there, had a look at the big cells there and like the surgery tables and stuff and x-ray tables. Really cool and creepy and then we went back down to where the canteen was and then we went to the main cell bit to watch the doors of the cells be opened and closed. Apprentice to the X-ray tech, and he saw it as a way out. He got out of prison legally, conditional release. He got a job in a hospital. He met a nurse, married, raised a family. He never reoffended. He was an X-ray technician.
Shut, and they could do like individual cells doors or like all the cellar doors and we have a video of it all right so this is going to be sounds of the slammer cell door demonstration my name is Anna I'm going to be your guide for this brief little tour um, I'm going to roll all the doors many times I'm going to show you how they work explain them a little bit and I'm also going to tell you the brief story of one man who is locked up in one of these cells so before we get going, would your behavior change if you knew that you were being watched? Thank you for answering. Maybe you should use it as a rhetorical question. Standing. And this was because this was the part of the prison where you didn't have any privacy. You could be housed directly and were often housed right directly across from someone else or many other someones. You can imagine moving into one of the cells here on Broadway as a newcomer, as was protocol, and you're suddenly stripped of all your privacy every time you come home from work, you come home from the dining hall, you try to relax in your bed, you try to go to the bathroom, you've got eyes on you all the time. And suddenly, your entire life is dictated by the sounds of these cell doors. Now you guys might be able to see this nice red stripe painted on the edges of the open cells. That's so the correctional officer who's standing where I am controlling these doors can see very clearly if any doors haven't opened, or if any doors uh, opened when they weren't supposed to, or if anything's being stuck out to prevent the door from closing, once again blocking the locking mechanism. These doors, these red stripes, like many things in this prison, were designed for the ease of watching the prison population to keep them under control as best as they could. Now back to my original question. Would your behavior change if you knew that your thoughts were being watched? If you knew that you could be locked up in one of these cells in Alcatraz's cell house for just your thoughts alone? Now in more recent years, as many as 3 to 6% of all people incarcerated locked up in this country right now are not there for legally committing a crime. They are wrongfully convicted. Since 1989, the National Registry of Exonerations has recorded roughly 3,000 exonerations, totaling in 25,000 years lost to prison. Now I find a very difficult time trying to wrap my head around how long 25,000 years is. One way I've contextualized it for myself 
is that 25,000 years ago, humans were only just learning to use pottery for the first time ever. Imagine that long of a time lost to prison for people who never even committed the crime. As you go home tonight, think about this theme I've been talking about and question what beliefs you hold that are strong enough for you to get into one of those cells and face the sounds of a slammer for it. Thank you all for joining me. I hope you have a great rest of your evening. Thank you. It was very cool at once. It, like, it was very cool towards the end of the day because there was no, practically nobody else there. So it was ju basically just us and a few other people. And we just go around in like the dark. With There was a light on us, practically in the dark. And it was like just us so we could look at everything. And, Got good, like, good, yeah, very good. Ready to go into isolation, Thomas? We then got back and got pizza. Both nights. <laughs> I'm gonna have a wild night. Anna, like, follow. Thumbs up. Ah. Ah.